Good evening to you and welcome uh, on PM Express. I know you were waiting to see Nana and Sakwao, but I'm sitting in for Nana and Sakwao this evening. We all know the much-awaited uh, Congress of the CPP and we know the noise that came with that Congress. And all too soon, that has ended. And we know who emerged winner, the then General Secretary, Ivo Greenstreet, a lawyer, who emerged winner. And we also know the disagreements and the accusations that have come after this Congress. We want to look at the CPP, Ivo Greenstreet leading the CPP, their fortunes in 2016, and how they can put all these disagreements aside and build a party, I mean a formidable party, towards election 2016 and grabbing power. We'll take a break on PM Express. We'll be back with the discussion. So we spoke with Victor Ivor Green Street this morning. A lot of uh, inciting comments he made and how passionate he is to build the party towards 2016 and how passionate he wants to unite the party, the differences in the party. We've also heard from the chairman, Edmond Dele, who is calling for calm. He actually asked Samia Nkrumah, who accused Ivor Green Street of vote buying, to apologize and retract that. But unfortunately, her response says that it's not necessary to uh, apologize because he knows and she can ascertain that there was indeed vote buying. All of these, let's listen to Ivo Green Street, we'll listen to Edmond Dele, and we will get Samia Yaba's report and then response to this, and then we can uh, continue with a discussion on PM Express. If you remember in our last campaign, unfortunately for uh, the highly respected and very intelligent, committed gentleman uh, who the party elected, that is Dr. Abu Sakara, he was not elected until May of 2012, which was literally just a few months to the election. And uh, we weren't able to galvanize sufficient support for him. And his election was actually prior or post the departure of Dr. Indum at that time. Yes. So, you know, there was a, a real perception, you know, and <coughs> we were, you know, uh, finding things difficult. The election prior to that, Dr. Indum um, uh, was the candidate. And we also had a divided front at that time internally, and that also came out into the public domain and affected uh, the performances of the party at that time. Um, uh, going back to the election before, uh, George Agudi, I'm sure you remember that was when we had a situation where there were some group of persons who decided they were supporting another presidential candidate mm -hmm. whilst he was a presidential candidate. Dr. Um, uh, and now Professor Dilly was chairman and leader then. That was his first term as chairman and leader. And I know that he will be able to describe to you the kind of things he had to endure at that time. Um, uh, with respect to the divisions in the party. Mm -hmm. So that is why, as I explained earlier, my contesting as a neutral candidate, okay, and, and the desire of the rank and file to have a candidate who can uni unify the party, it is because they realize that in all these elections we have not worked as a team and that it is our internal disunity which has caused the problems of our performance at the polls rather than what is out there in the public domain. And if the public see you have this perception of you as being divided within, then they'll realize that, oh, you are not a group of individuals who want to serve them and cater to their needs. Rather, you are a group of individuals who have too much ego, too much pride, and are fighting amongst yourselves as to who is in charge. And so that is why I was even voted for. These are one of the reasons why the delegates thought about this very carefully and said, okay, Green can be the one who can bring us together. He knows the party. He knows everybody. He knows the problems. We can work as a team. We have just referred to the fact that uh, the contest for me to become the candidate was a covert operation. This will be another operation that we will do within ourselves, determining how we will move forward. And then it is when the ballots are counted on the election day that we will know what we have achieved and what God has decided to do with our efforts. Politically, I've always felt the best way to um, uh, engage with your colleagues is not through Facebook. So I've always wondered why uh, these requests from um, uh, you know, my good brother um, uh, Dr. Indum would come through Facebook because how many political parties are there? If there are things you want to do, you can meet us 
behind closed doors, sit down, we have discussions, look at the strategy, look at the possibilities, and then we, we know what we're doing. There is absolutely no need for that. It is an open secret that 200 Ghana CDs, 300 Ghana CDs, 500 Ghana CDs, 1,000 Ghana CDs, 3,000 Ghana CDs were given to delegates during our conference on Saturday. We've heard other leading members, other even delegates, um, saying that on radio stations and TV. What is dangerous is to hide the truth. If we want progress in this country, certain things need to be said. So you had Ivor Greenstreet uh, making some points there, and you had the response from uh, Samia. Nkrumah will be trying to get you the response also from Edmund Dilley, chairman of the party, who says that they should uh, unite after Congress. There's no need uh, with any uh, accusations. And he asked Samia to uh, retract her comments and apologize, but she feels it's not necessary. Guess who I have in the studio to do the discussion with me? His name is Kadri Abdurrahouf. He is the communications director of the CPP. Good evening. Thanks for joining us on Hi, Aisha. Good evening. PM Express. First, uh, we know that the CPP Congress went well. Tell us, was it successful? Yes. Uh, first of all, let me say a very good evening to our cherished viewers. And then let me add on top of that, that this particular Congress of the Convention People's Party is one of the finest congresses ever organized in the recent history of the Convention People's Party. Right. You may recall, running up to the Congress, the chairman and leader of the party, Professor Edmond Dilley, made a promise that this particular Congress was going to be a blast. It was going to be, you know, a hot shot. And I think that given the fact that the organizational committee the Congress Committee were able to put, you know, their energies together. It is a happy result of what we had on Saturday. And I think that it was highly successful. You know, none of the aspirants had any, you know, reason to raise red flag concerning the processes leading to the Congress. So on that plank, I think it is safe for me to indicate that it was highly a success. Okay, it was highly a success. Yeah. And now we're hearing some accusations of vote buying. What do you say to that? Well, I have a different approach to this whole, you know, issue of um, vote buying. In any case, I have said on certain platforms that it is not, you know, I wouldn't call it vote buying or I wouldn't call it bribery. I would rather want to describe what happened as a certain form of solidarity. Now, why am I saying this? You would find that the bulk of the supporters of the Convention People's Party, I mean the delegates, right. many of them you can see without any fear of contradiction that many of them, you know, are, are, are jobless. Many of them do not really, you know, are not empowered economically. Now, to bring people from the length and breadth of their country for about, you know, 48 hours, to undertake a particular exercise. And at the end of it, you actually find something paltry, a, a, a peanut, you know, give to them as a way of getting them to, you know, buy, you know, water or food on the way, you know, from their destination back to their destination. I would not want to uh, describe it as, you know, vote buying. You know, it only becomes dangerous if the intention is to, Get, get people corrupted by that kind of, you know, overtures, by that kind of gestures. If you, your intention is to corrupt them and let them lose track of their conscience, their good conscience, then it is a dangerous phenomenon. But, but of course, if someone is hungry and you give the person food, you are, you know, you have the, the tendency of changing the thinking of that Yeah, person. it is a tendency, but it does not always follow. Because okay. human beings vary in their outlook, in their perspectives. Right. And I know a number of hungry people who do not easily fall prey to some of these things. So I think that what happened on Saturday, you know, I have been speaking to various, you know, 
media platforms and I've also listened to the leaders of my party, you know, discussing it and then what have you. My personal approach is that it certainly cannot be seen as something, you know, vote buying. You know, I would just think but that... But there were some monies. I mean, there were people who were given monies, but not for, to buy their votes, but they were given money. Aisha, would you believe me if I tell you that personally I cannot confirm that? That people were given yeah, money. I cannot confirm that personally. But, 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 I mean, from what you're saying... What uh, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to say, be that the case. Okay. Be that the case. Right. I would not want to call it vote buying because... If you do a thorough examination of what happened in, uh, on Congress Day and particularly the activities running up to Congress, you'll find that virtually all the aspirants have, you know, attempted to, you know, give gifts. It can actually be small or big, but they have all attempted, you know, to help, you know, delegates in one way or the other. Now, for any of the aspirants to, you know, think that another person has bribed them and it is on the basis of that, that person has won. I would want to, you know, take, you know, a different approach to that. Knowing the personality of Ivor Kobna Green Street and also knowing very well that he was, you know, the only candidate who traversed the 275 constituencies in the country. He met people in their houses and in some instances he slept with the delegates in their houses. You know, I, given, you know, analyzing things from this background, you would want to see that probably he won because of his close association to the people on the ground. And the idea of vote buying, even if it is going to be a case, it will be highly insignificant. Don't you think it's an indictment of him as a person, a lawyer, who has served the party as general secretary for almost eight years? That is what I'm saying. I wouldn't, what, what kind of indictment can it be? Because we're talking about a situation. Look, this afternoon I listened to him. He says that if you say, you know, I bribed, you know, uh, uh, them through my loyalty, I bribed them through my, you know, sincerity to their purpose and their, you know, their activities and stuff, he would agree. But for you to say that you, he bribed them with money, you know, he would, he would disagree. And then that is what I would want to say. And Aisha, you may, you know, know this better. Okay. Even within journalistic, you know, circles, right. you would find something, a word which is, you know, gaining grounds called solidarity. Okay. You know, as a way, it is, if, for example, a journalist comes to cover a program for me and I give you solely, is it to buy your conscience? Yes, it is to buy my conscience, depending on, I mean, so we don't take solely. In, if, in, in multimedia, we don't take solely okay. because we feel that that may jeopardize uh, the objectivity of our story. So you are full, that is no, a no-no here. But you are well aware that other journalists take it. And we've condemned it all this while. So that can, I, don't, I don't see how that can translate into an electioneering uh, platform. No, I want, to, I want to set a certain allusion. For example... Okay, so it means that he, there were some monies giving. There were some monies giving to people, but for instance, to cover their food, for their transport, but not to buy their conscience. No, you know, when the point here? that I made, the point that I made was that you know, at everything that you do, significantly, the intent is very, very important. The right. intent. Okay. Now, if your intention is to make people lose their good conscience okay. and act without even knowing the full implication of their action, mm. then it is a practice that actually must be confronted. You know, that must be discouraged. That must actually be needed. But, but in the you, you say that um, it was for a good purpose and not to buy the people's conscience. On what criteria do you, um, you know, come by the conclusion that whatever monies were given to these people did not buy their conscience. I will tell you, for example, I told you a little bit about the personality of Green Street. And I also mentioned that Green Street was the only candidate who visited the 275 constituencies in the country. I also mentioned that in some occasions he slept with the delegates. Okay. You understand? And then this is a man who understands, you know, the daily struggles of our delegates. He understands it full well. And I can say without any fear of contradiction that of the four aspirants, Green Street was the one who really understood the permutations on the ground. So now, I shall know him very well, you know, the, the, the living conditions of your own people. Mm. And you actually try, okay, you stop your farming. Because most of them are farmers and some of them are teachers. Some of them are carpenters and what have you. You stop to come to Accra and you say, okay, you take this, you buy food on the way coming and you buy food on the way going, how can that be said to be something bad? And but how would you see empirically that it influenced somebody's you know, uh, uh, choice of voting? How would you say empirically? Of course, from trends, uh, it, it is 
it has been ascertained uh, that when people are hungry and you give them food, you are likely to change their mindset about you. If I feel that you are a wicked man and you see me and you give me food, it will change my perception about you. That why are people calling this man a wicked man? Because he saw me and he gave me food. So, of course, it's not something you can see, but it's something that happens. So, we cannot rule out that fact. Uh, yeah, well, you see, as for possibility, we can say it is within the range of possibility. But I would want to state here conclusively that it does not always follow. Because I know a good number of people who would never let their guards down because of battle gains. Well, Ivor Green Street uh, wants to unite the party. Indeed, Edmond Dele has called for that. And uh, the fact that uh, there has also been uh, an accusation from Samia means that she may not be willing to work with Ivor Green Street because, uh, of course, if you listen to her, she certainly doesn't see him as the um, someone who was who was who was genuinely voted for but he bought the votes to become the flag bearer uh, professor Acosta has also accused him of not he thinks that he cannot do anything for the party because he has served for almost eight years and what has where has he taken the party to how do you foresee Ivor Green Street merging uh, or bringing all these people on board and forging ahead for 2016? Well, you know, when I started, I made an attempt to, you know, expose a certain character or a certain feature of Ivor Governor Greenstein, which is not known to so many Ghanaians, like his prodigious capacity for work, his ability to go down to the constituency and even in some occasions sleep with delegates and then what have you, that is a mark of humbleness. Now let me talk about what I know about Samia. I have also worked very closely with Samia. And I actually admire Samia because she has a very clear and uncorruptible you know, understanding of the bigger picture. And I know that she, if you listen to her, she said that she is not happy, but she accepts the, you know, the, 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 the results, you understand? And it is normal and natural for someone to express. And then one thing I also know about Samia Nkrumah is that she's brutally frank. Samia Nkrumah's ye is her ye and her knee is her knee. That cannot be taken away from her. But I tell you most solemnly, when the wind begins to blow, I, I, am, I would not be, you know, doubtful about Samia coming to join because she knows that at that point it is not about Ivor Kobina Green State and how he became the running mate of the Convention People's Party, but it is the Convention People's Party. And I know that Honorable Samia Nkrumah will do everything in order to protect, enhance, and preserve the Convention People's Party. Well, you had uh, uh, Kaduri uh, speaking for the CPP. He is the communications director. We'll be picking some phone calls. We'll try and speak with Ivor Green Street himself. We'll try and speak with a political analyst in the course of this show to get divert, divert opinions on this issue. We'll take a break on PM Express. We'll be back with the discussion. This is PM Express on Joy News. Uh, we're talking about the CPP's Congress. That ended uh, without uh, uh, the usual um, accusations of vote buying and all of that. We have Dr. Bosman Asari, is a political science lecturer at the University of Ghana. Good evening, sir. Uh, many thanks for your time on PM Express tonight. Hello, Ms. Dr. Asari. Good evening. Hello, I'm hearing you. Dr. Asari, uh, like we said, CPP Congress uh, during the weekend did not end, uh, you know, without uh, the usual accusation, uh, topmost vote buying, and you know all of these uh, when there are uh, such congresses. Um, were you surprised or are you surprised with the outcome of this Congress? In terms of the outcome, I wouldn't say uh, I'm so much surprised or something like that. But before I even go to that, we must understand that uh, vote buying has become synonymous with the elections in Ghana. And we've always been having situations whereby even losing parties will even try to do something. But at the end of the day, the highest bidder may end up getting away with uh, some of these crimes, which are completely unacceptable. But in terms of the outcome, Based on what we've been hearing, uh, Mr. Green Street did a lot of campaigning rather than uh, media visibility, media presence, 
etc. And I think when you look at it objectively, he appears to be more likable than the other candidates. He speaks very well. He appears to be very, very intelligent. So I think the delegates identify something in him, and they think that he will be a better fit, a good leader to lead the CPP into the next election. So I'm hoping that he can do that for the party. So how should this overwhelming uh, victory uh, by Ivor Green Street, are they just ended Congress, be interpreted? Please come again. I'm saying that the overwhelming victory of Ivor Green Street, how should we interpret this? No, I think it's, it's really an excitement to the party and it's an indication that he has brought some excitement to the CPP in general. And when you look at the 60, 64 point something percentage points he won by, you could realize that many people were, the delegates were sending a signal that this is the man we think can bring some uh, transformation to the party. This is someone we think can really take us to the next level. If even we are not going to win the election, he's going to bring many people on board. And let's be very clear, he's someone with some physical disability. Even in spite of that, the delegates still think that, no, this is the right person for the job. So I expect that he is going to take advantage of some of this, try to bring people on board, people who have been marginalized by the economic system we are running, people who are vulnerable, etc., to try to bring them on the CPP side. So I'm thinking that he can do uh, some magic for the CPP. It looks to me like it will be a very tough assignment for Ivor Green Street to try and pull all strings together and unite the party, like he's saying. One, uh, Samia Yabankroma is not satisfied with this election, and she accuses him of vote buying. Two, we've heard from Professor uh, Akosa, who says that he's been general secretary for eight years. We don't know what he has done for the party. Where has he taken the party? And there are other comments coming from members of his own party. How easy is it going to be for him to put all of these people together and forge ahead for election 2016? I think it's really, it's really going to be a very tough battle. But for someone who has been given the nomination, he's been made the flag bearer of the party. And if you are someone like Professor uh, Akusa, you are someone like uh, Samia, you want your party to be doing very well. So in spite of the accusations, in spite of the vote buying, etc., I believe that in the heat of the competition, they will be saying a whole lot of things. But once everything has come to an end, they will understand that is the CPP brand. Because all of them stand to gain. If even CPP can win 6%, 7% of the presidential vote. And they want a party that will be very strong, a party that will be very competitive, a party that will provide an alternative to the, the NDC and the MPP. So if you have gone through a process, they're, they're obviously we expect them misunderstand about I I strongly think that they will understand that they have to rally behind. All of them should be seen to be policing around Mr. Green Street. You know, he alone cannot do it. And if he fails, it appears like all of them have failed. And when you look at someone like uh, Samia, she's been identified with the CPP, uh, synonymous with the CPP, etc. So if even you couldn't win the presidential uh, nomination and someone has won it, you owe it a responsibility to the party, to your father, to ensure that the party can do whatever is necessary, whatever is proper, so that the Ghanaian people will still show the CPP. We've noticed in the last two elections that CPP has not made good showings at all. You look at 2008-2012. So I expect that with this excitement that has come to the party, although some will not see that way, they should be able to put their house in order, support Mr. Green Street, help him to get a, a, a running mate who will make sure that they can campaign around the country to increase the fortunes of the CPP. So does uh, Ivor Green Street mean good fortunes for the party? No, I, I think it's, it means a lot, uh, not only to the CPP as a party. I think in Ghana we've never had anyone with a certain form of disability, someone in the wheelchair being uh, elected, nominated as the flag bearer of a political party. And this man has led the way. And in Ghana, based on uh, several conservative estimates, 
the experts are saying we have about 2 million or so of our people who have some forms of uh, disability. So if he can even capitalize and get 20% of these individuals to rally to come and support him, that will be a lot of fortune as far as the CPP is concerned. And let's even put that one aside. He speaks very well, very intelligent, and he appears to be likable. And these are the sorts of people people want to vote for in elections. Do you want to have lunch with a person like that? Someone who is in a wheelchair, but in spite of all these challenges, has served as a general secretary of a party and has gone through the process campaigning around the country. So I think that this is something which is very good for our democracy and is very good for the CPP as a party. How should the CPP strategize itself for election 2016? I think, you know, Ghanaians have, uh, since 1992, been used to the NDC and the NPP. So this really is a big challenge to the third parties, the PPP, the CPP, etc. But increasingly, many Ghanaians are also becoming dissatisfied with the performance of these two political parties. And several people are asking questions, can there be a third force? Can the third force be able to bring certain transformation into the country. We know certainly that in this next election, it's either the NDC uh, candidate or the NPP candidate who will emerge victorious. But we need third parties to be able to uh, become kingmakers by their actions, by their inactions, if they can push the elections to the second round. And when you have individuals like Mr. Green Street, Dr. Papakwesi Indu, doing very well, even making a showing of 5% collectively, then we are going to have a situation whereby the election will go into a second round. And these people are going to tell their members, we think that when we look at the uh, party platforms of the MPP and the NDC, we think this party has a good program to transform uh, the Ghanaian people. So go and vote for this. So once they're able to uh, campaign and do things very well and they can get about 5, 6, 7 percent, etc., then it, it really sends a signal that the third parties are very, very important. At least since 2008, 2012, we've noticed that the fortunes of the third parties are dwindling. So I'm expecting someone like Mr. Green Street to work very hard, bring some people on board and ensure that they can make a good show in, in 2016. Dr. Bosman, uh, before we, you go, we've picked signals of some measure that could happen between, we, we don't have confirmation yet, between the CPP and the PPP. We've had yes. the PNC, we've seen some conversation going on, on on Facebook and all of that. Would you advise a measure for the CPP to enable it win power in 2016? Well, I think that if, if the uh, PNC especially and, and the CPP, when you look at them, both of them appear to have uh, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah as, let's say, the spiritual authority, the symbol of the political party. So people expect that these two parties especially should be able to come on board. And when you look at the PPP, it's not so different. But the question is, will they, will they accept the modalities for them to come together? And as it stands now, when you look at internally, they appear to be divided. The PNC, you are going to have some members who appear to be leaning towards the NDC, some appear to be leaning towards the NPP, etc. And when you look at the CPP, all these elements are in place. So this is something which appears to be very, very difficult. And when you are being very objective, since 1992, when we started, and when CPP came on the scene, CPP appears to be doing better when it comes to the, uh, the popular vote in the presidential election. But PNC has gotten several representation in parliament. So depending on the criteria or the criterion they are going to use, they should be able to come together and say the flag bearer of the PNC will probably be the one leading, the one from the CPP will become the deputy, etc. But this is something they've tried for several years and it's not been working. So I expect that each of them is, will try and build their brand so that they can become attractive to the Ghanaian people. But the bigger picture is that third parties are going to struggle in our election because many Ghanaians want to be part of the winning coalition. And right. in Ghana, when you want to be part of the winning coalition, your thinking is either the MPP or the NDC. But in the situation where we feel both the NDC and the NPP are not uh, pleasing to our eyes anymore, we, couldn't, we can't go for a third party? 
that's why it's, it's really going to be a tough, a tough sell to the Ghanaian people. Many people will be expressing it. They will be speaking. Oh, things are very tough, but still, we, we also know that it's either the MPP or the NDC who emerge victorious at the presidential polls. And the problem is, is because of the system we are running. Our political system is such that it favors uh, two strong political parties. In certain countries where they have the proportional representation, the system favors several, even smaller parties are able to become competitive. But our system has been made in such a way that it favors two political parties. So I'm not surprised that many Ghanaians are thinking in dualistic terms. It's either the MPP or the NDC. So when it comes to parliament, once in a while, then you are going to get an independent person, someone from a third party winning the election. But the bigger picture is that we are running a system which favors two main political parties. So until that problem is addressed in the constitution, the two parties, even if they don't perform very well, many Ghanaians are going to see them as the parties that will get them to the promised land. Thank you so much, Dr. Bosman Asari, for speaking to us. We are really grateful for your time. Uh, good night, uh, Dr. Bosman Asari. Uh, we, we've had some uh, members of the Disabled uh, Union who are very happy and, and think that Ivor Green Street will bring a lot of difference and will bring a lot of encouragement to persons with disabilities. We can listen to them. As flag bearer of the very party that won independence for Ghana, yeah. for us it is a big uh, what achievement. It's a great news. Because one, it, demonstrate, it is a shining example of the capability and capacity of a person with disability, which most Ghanaians do not recognize. It is also an encouragement to parents with children with disability to know that when you have a child with disability, it, that child is not a useless child. In, investing in the education of uh, a child with disability is equally as important as investing in any other child. They've seen it. Now, assuming he wins the election, he will be the uh, president of Ghana. And this is a motivation to all parents. It is also a motivation to person and a, a motivation and a source of inspiration to person with disability that, look, you can rise above the table and currents of stereotyping, discrimination, uh, environment and environmental and communication barriers that we are facing on a daily basis. Yeah. We can only go there. And there is a, is, it also demonstrate that where there is will, there is way. And above all, it confirm the advocacy of Ghana Federation of the Disabled uh, that the inclusion and effective participation of persons with disability in national and local government is not a mere hype but something that is well thought through and well founded. I mean, when you yourself heard that he had won the election, how did you feel? How did you feel? I feel happy that the people, them, uh, the people have spoken through their delegate. If you, uh, when I look at the figures, it was 1,288. Yeah. As again, the uh, second runner up, which is 579. And it means that the people have recognized his competency, despite his disability. And, and uh, earlier on, uh, I heard Kabila even made a statement that he, among the candidates, he was the best candidate that he could, he could, could predict to win. And his winning this election also remind me of the f late uh, former president of the United States, Franklin D. Roosevelt who in the first term of his office as president was attacked by polio and had to use both wheelchair and walking stick. But he stayed, uh, stayed American successfully through Teplan years and was even rewarded as the only American president who has ever been re-elected four consecutive times. So if uh, there is no, uh, some people may say that is America. Well, the skin doesn't make a difference. What makes the difference is our ability to think and reason, our ability to execute what the plans that we have, that is what is making the difference. And not Gauging the sense within your group, you know, do you think some of your members, or even including you, are going to vote for him because you, you feel that he's one of you? 
no, no, no. We are not voting for him. We feel he is one of us. When you see uh, the delegate who elected him were not person with disability, but they elected him based on maybe the message he presented to them. You understand what I mean? So he will vote for him. We, we are not voting because he's person with disability, but because of uh, the, maybe the message and the competency that we will see in him. That is why we we'll vote. Uh, okay, so well, congratulations to Mr. Ivor Greenstreet for that uh, overwhelming victory. Let's pick some comments from Facebook and WhatsApp. Oti Jones uh, from a Swarm says, Why have many politicians become so cynical in this country? Does it mean nobody can win election genuinely in Ghana? Whenever a politician loses election in this country, he or she cries foul and all sorts of ridiculous allegations are made which cannot be proven. On Facebook, Mahama Bakojo says, this is quite shocking. However, I think it's good news for people with disability and the fact that many people are now beginning to accept that people with disabilities can also make a positive impact. But is it also that many people don't really want a woman to lead them now that he has won? Let's wait to see what the larger Ghanaian electorate will have to say in November. Not a member of CPP anymore. But I wish him all the best as he holds the mantle. Tia Idrisu Jr. says, oh, people of Ghana, look at what the system is now moving into. Common pure water, um, we can no longer buy unless, what are we planning for? Well, he's talking about something else. So uh, these are some of the messages coming in. And this one says, congrats, man. That was a great speech. And Simon Boateng says, an alliance with NPP will be the best. Hashtag perfect advice. So this is PM Express. And uh, I have I still have in the studio with me Kadri Abdurraouf, who is the communications uh, director of the CPP. Kadri, now Congress is over. The bigger picture is election 2016. What next for the CPP? Yeah, before I comment on the bigger picture, let me also add that we in the Convention People's Party are of the candid opinion that the election of Ivor Governor Green Street is going to be a magic one for us. Because given the fact that the Convention People's Party is always at the forefront of the dialectical movements of our country. For example, you recall that at the independence of Ghana, it was a CPP that was at the forefront of the independence of Ghana. The CPP was at the forefront of our Republican attainment of Republican statute. Just last week, the CPP brought another dimension to the democracy of Ghana by being the first party to introduce intra, you know, a, a, a presidential debate. This has never happened in the uh, political history of this country. And now the CPP has also gone down in the everlasting books of history as being the party that has presented for the first time in the political history of Ghana somebody who is physically disabled to lead us. It only tells you how broad-minded the Convention People's Party is. And, it's, it, and it also tells you how wise our delegates are. And I was particularly touched with what the disabled man who you just you know, interviewed said. If you know Ivor Kobina Green Street very well, you know that if people are going to support him, they are not going to support him out of sympathy. They are going to support him because of his worth. And some of us who have worked closely with him, we know very well that he has all it takes to lead this country at this crucial point. Because for Commander Grizzly, is not just a lawyer, but he's also a serious negotiator. He's a serious negotiator. Let's take a break on PM Express. And when we come back, Abdurraouf will tell us how he negotiates for the CPP. Welcome back on PM Express. We're talking about the CPP Congress and the fallout. And uh, before we went on the break, Abdul Kadri Raouf said, um, Ivor Green Street is a good negotiator. There are people who feel that the NPP has become, uh, the CPP has become less attractive even to the young Ghanaian. Why? Because the party relies so much on the legacies of Dr. Nkrumah without actually presenting anything new as to how the party will be moved from Nkrumah's foundation to a higher pedestal. And so 
Young people would not want to identify themselves with the CPP. Tell me, how is Ivor Green Street going to negotiate this time around with Ghanaians and tell them that, look, CPP is now an attractive party. Come and join us. Let's win power in 2016. I was listening to, or I read a report, and the report suggested amply that at the moment, the Convention People's Party is the most youthful party in this country. Really? Yes. And then I think, was it Benefsin or one of the, you know, journalists did that study? And even you would confirm it if you were at our Congress, you'll find that most of the delegates were youthful. Okay. Now, even if you come and look at the structure of our, you know, leadership, just look at my face very well. I'm the communications director of the Convention People's Party. And you're a young man. Very, 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 very young. And this okay. has no precedence in history. Okay. So the assumption or the mentality that the Convention People's Party is not attractive to the youth is lost its relevance. It's no longer something that can be taken seriously. Okay. Now, let me also mention that Ivor Kobina Greenstreet, as I said, is someone who is very, very magnetic. Okay. Ivo Kobina Green Street has a natural mesmeric ability Charisma. to galvanize the support of people okay. who listen to him. Okay. And if you have the opportunity of working with Ivo Kobina Green Street, you are certainly going to be captured by his charisma. So, and I have said earlier that he's a very good negotiator. And one thing I've learned about negotiation is that you cannot go into a negotiation table with a, you know, a, a fixed in, a mind a mindset which you want it to be constant. If you do that, usually you lose because you have to go with some room where you can, you know, relax, you know, your, 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 your feet on certain issues. And I think that as of now, if there is one politician who is strategically pleased to increase the fortunes of the Convention People's Party and also speak to the daily problems of the masses of the people of Ghana, it is Ivor Kobina Green Street. And as I said, he is somebody this afternoon, I mentioned on a platform that he is both formal and informal. I for Communal Green Street, if you look at his background, he is from, quote unquote, within, you know, the socialist you know, circles. He is from a bourgeoisie background. Mm. But I for Communal Green Street has committed class suicide. There's something that we call within the Marxist balance class suicide. When you come from a rich family and you are able to bring yourself down to the poor people, you've committed class suicide. Right. And this was the same thing Kwame Nkrumah did when he came back from the United States of America. You recall that when he came back, he was a lecturer in the U.S. He had several opportunities. If he also wanted, he could you know, stay on his high horse. But Kwame Nkrumah committed suicide by bringing himself down. And that is the same thing Ivor Kobna Green Street has done. And one thing I would also want to see here is that we think from our analysis that Ivor Kobna Green Street no doubt is going to be an addition to our fortune in the sense that, you know, he was not born physically disabled. Okay. Yeah, he actually got accident. And in that accident, the people that he got the accident all perished except him. Wow. And we think that the fact that he was left, it means that he is cut for a bigger agenda. There is something about him that made, you know, Allah not to take away his life. He's cut for a big agenda. And we find that agenda to be this uh, path that he has taken himself onto. And we would give him all the uh, solidarity. We will give him the support and encouragement. And we will work with him ninth day and then, you know, afternoon to ensure that we are able to make our case to Ghanaians. And unfortunately also, Kobina Green Street also has, you know, gaps. He has flair. He's somebody who can talk and it will cut the hearts of people. So I believe that with all these positive attributes of him, we are very sure that as a party, if we are able to consolidate it, certainly we will launch a very big, you know, uh, onslaught on the Ghanaian political, you know, system. Quickly, our time is up, but it's obvious that your campaign thrust all these years has not yielded much results for the party and that's why the CPP has not been able to come to power. I believe you want to change some of your strategies yeah, and that was exactly this time round. What Ivor Kobina Green Street was saying. You know, most often even the chairman of the Convention People's Party, Professor Dele also said it, that if CPP is going to be destroyed, it is going to be destroyed by members of the Convention People's Party. In other words, our enemies are not without but within. And I tell you all this while most of you know our problems emanate from you know the party some petty squabbles and most of those disagreements and the struggles are not anchored on principle you are on ego and then pride like ivor Kobina green street said 
And I tell you most truly, given the kind of knowledge that I have about Ivor Covenant, he is not a man who you can describe as being haughty. No, he is down to earth. And I believe that all these years, the Convention People's Party has always lacked a man, a person who is down to earth. And before I end on this, in 1962, Whilst Kwame Nkrumah was speaking to a group of students, he made a certain you know, statement. And I find those criteria that Kwame Nkrumah said to be conveniently seated in Ivor Kobina Green Street. Kwame Nkrumah said that Africa and Ghana, for that matter, needed a new type of man, a dedicated, honest, and committed man. And you a think man that who uh, submit himself in service uh, to his uh, people. Uh, Ivor Green Street is junior doctor Osajifo Nkrumah, right? I, I, because there are similarities. I just told you one. Of the similarity, Nkuma committed class suicide in order to salvage the people and, of Ghana. And, he's and he has also that line. committed class suicide in order to salvage the so there Thank are you very much, uh, Kadri Abdurao, for coming on PM Express. We, we talked about the CPP and the fact that the CPP Congress is over, and we're looking at what next for the CPP. You heard Kadri, he outlined a number of uh, issues, and he says that they are going to change their strategies this time around and they're going to win power in 2016. Thanks so much for watching PM Express. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Good night. <sighs>